been so stinking long since I've like put on the camera and recorded anything for you guys. It almost feels a little weird, like I feel almost disconnected from you, but I still want to be an advocate for estheticians and I still want to get back on my video game, even though I'm so, so, so sorry I have dropped on my videos, but I am back. So today's topic is learn from my mistakes kind of video. So I just want to go through the seven main tips that I would give you guys if you were to start your aesthetics or beauty business today in 2021. So let's get into it. Before I actually get started with the video, I do want to give the time to thank everyone who has reached out to me, all the DMs that I get. Please DM me if you have any questions about starting your business or any general esthetician questions. I am always here to help. So the first thing on my list is I want you guys to know that starting a business is not easy. No matter what kind of business it is, it is extremely difficult. I had a lot of ups and downs. Um, I've even wanted to give up a couple of times. That brings me to the point that there are really slow days. So every day is not going to be a great day. Slow days come and go, but also there's really busy days. There's days that I'm in at 9 a.m. and I don't leave till 8 p.m. I do that most days out of the week, but when those slow days come, they come. So at one point, I actually reached out and tried to get a second job. That was about, I would say almost a year ago, I was like, I need a job. There's no way that I can continue like this, paying the rent of my business without making a significant amount of money. So I went to the interview. I did everything I had to do. I got the job. I got hired on the spot. And that day, I got requests for a bunch of appointments during the time that I would be working my regular desk job. So I took that as a sign from God. I was like, you know what? I am going to leap in full force into this business. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is where I'm happiest at. And I did it. And I haven't regretted it since. I don't regret not getting a new job. I've been able to make more income than I have in my full-time job at USAA super happy about that and it's a work in progress things aren't built overnight these overnight success stories are amazing but they're not my reality and i just wanted to be truthful and honest with you guys and tell you that it takes time it takes real effort and energy and consistency in your work every day you get better there was also a meme that i saw that really stuck with me and i have it here so i can read it to you verbatim it says you won't get career level results from hobby level commitment and I live by that. You have to really work hard. Like this is your career. This isn't something that you're doing on the side. This isn't something for fun. Although it can be both of those things. Put your whole heart and soul into it and your efforts and the fruits of your labor will really grow and you'll see your business grow and you'll see your clients return and it's just really rewarding at the end. There are even some days where I can make $650 in a day and the next day make $0. If you don't have that type of commitment to your business, and knowing that you're it's gonna work out don't spend all your money when you when it comes in big lump sums you have to learn how to save and how to budget because there are rainy days when it comes to owning your own stuff but the trick is not to get discouraged make sure that you're doing your posts you're showing your work you're advocating for yourself because you are your biggest fan make sure that you are just doing the best that you can to screw your business to the top of the roof or your lungs whichever saying that is, <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> Lesson number two I learned is it takes a lot of time to be good at what you do. I'm two years in and I am just now loving my work. My lashes are coming out bomb, I'm coming home, like I can do a good job. That doesn't happen overnight. It took two years of consistency to actually really, really be good. And it's a continuous learning process. So best advice, don't be so hard on yourself. Keep posting those pictures, keep posting those bad pictures, keep posting those good pictures, it doesn't matter. Do your best, every single client. So one thing that has really helped me improve my work is every time a client sits on my chair, I'm like, this is gonna be the best set, the best lash that I can ever do. And I sit there and I focus. And that's my only goal for those two hours is to do the best lashes I've ever done. And that has been a world of a difference in my work. I can show you some before and after pictures of like my work about a year ago and my work today. What a difference, what a difference. Just your mindset and loving what you do shows in your work. 
Tip number three is not to compare yourself to others, other people's work. There are pictures on Instagram of people doing beautiful lashes and perfectly placed and all this stuff. The reality is some of those sets take up to five, six hours and they're just for Instagram. They're not their everyday clients that they're doing work like this. So be conscious of what you're comparing yourself to because sometimes that's just not reality. You know Instagram is full of Facetune and full of Photoshop and faking it till you make it. And a lot of the pictures that you see on Instagram has a lot to do with that. And everyday estheticians like me and you don't have time to spend six hours on a set. Of course, in the beginning, it does take you a little longer to get things done, but you shouldn't be spending six hours on the client. Time is money. Spend your two hours, two and a half hours, do the best work that you possibly can and move on. As you continue to do it, you continue to get better and faster and able to produce great work in a shorter amount of time. Tip number four, working for yourself is not a nine to five job. I'm sorry to break it to you. You're going to be working way more hours than you do at your regular nine to five, regular desk job, way more hours. Although owning your business, you're able to choose your own hours. So I choose to work um, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Friday, off Saturday and Sunday. That's what works best for me. I'm available for the clients at night who can't come during work hours, but I do also have my weekends. So I'm not sacrificing my Saturday doing that. As a business owner, I had to tell myself like, hey, I'm allowed to take weekends off. I don't have to work on Saturday. And it has been a really big help as far as like my mental state. I'm not going to work on Saturday miserable while all of my friends are hanging out and having a great time. I'm able to put that work in during the week and on Saturday really have a day to relax. Sunday, get ready for Monday and do it all over again. So that's what works best for me. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to work on Saturday because you're in the beauty industry because that's absolutely not true. So that's just a tip from me to you. Working on Saturdays also gave me a lot of stress. I feel like if there's a way that you can manage stress, do it. Working on Saturday, I mean not working on Saturdays gave me the peace of mind. I was literally working Monday through Saturday only off on Sunday. Sunday, laundry clean, go back to work on Monday. I was miserable. I wasn't loving what I do. And although being an esthetician, work is work. Work is always going to be work. That's why they don't call it fun. <laughs> so although you love what you do, it's still considered work. Um, what am I trying to say? Like basically the dread that people have going to work. I still get it sometimes. I'd rather be home watching Netflix, watching the newest episode of whatever season that I'm watching. I'd rather be doing that. I feel like everybody feels that way. And it doesn't magically disappear when you have your own business. It's not like you no longer have these feelings of not wanting to go to work once you own your business. So just keep in mind that you are doing what you love, but you still have to wake up every day and you have to do it yourself. There's nobody that's going to call you and be like, hey, come into work or hey, you don't have to come into work today. Like it is all up to you. So you can make the amount of money you want to make. You just have to put in the effort. Number five, owning a business is expensive. I don't know if enough people talk about this, but I do have a, um, a list of my expenses video. I can link it up here. But it is expensive i spend a lot of money on just overhead my rent keeping up with supplies and the demand of the supplies more clients equals spending more money <laughs> so the the want for more clients means that you have to buy more supplies so you can accommodate those clients so all of those things you have to keep in some you know keep on mind so as fast as money comes money goes i average about anywhere from 60 to 70 70 dollars an hour but that's not including the expenses that goes into it so i would say after expenses i'm averaging about 50 which is still pretty dang awesome but you have to keep in mind that everything that comes into your pocket as easy as it comes it goes you have to pay for your taxes because uncle sam's gonna get the little check you have to pay for your supplies you have to pay for your overhead and you also have to pay your regular you know life bills so as much freedom that comes with being a business owner there's a lot of responsibility and i feel like everybody's not cut to be a business owner it's just the way the cookie crumbles i feel like i'm using a lot of sayings in this video there has to be employees as well as there has to be business owners everybody can't be a business owner and that's just the way it is but as far as expenses go my advice is to buy things in bulk a lot of the websites that we buy our supplies from um, do have bulk options where you can buy a lot of it for a cheaper discounted rate. 
it makes it a lot easier for me. I think I buy wax twice a year and lashes I buy like every other month because I go through a lot more wa uh, lashes than I do anything else. But find ways to cut costs. Um, sometimes the most expensive item isn't the best and I've learned that through trial and error. I was buying $23, $26 trays of lashes or my lashes come out way better with $8 tray lashes. So it's honestly just trial and error. Finding what you like for a reasonable cost that actually balances out with the prices that you give to your clients. Number six. This one was a, it's a kind of hard pill to swallow. Clients are not your friends. <laughs> so as much as you love them and you've really built a bond with them over time, they are not your friends. They are your clients. They will drop you in a drop of a dime. They forget about you, move on to somebody else when you mess up or whatever the case is. Don't get attached. Try not to get attached to your clients. Um, of course, I do have one or two clients that have become really good friends, but I try not to do that often because it can really hurt you in the long run. You have to learn not to take it personal. It has sometimes nothing to do with you. It's just they were in your office for a season and decided to try somewhere else and that is okay. I'm guilty of it. I don't know how many nail techs I've had and it's not that I didn't like one. One can be a little closer to me so I don't have to drive as far. One can be a little cheaper so I have to pay a little less. So there's so many factors that make people change who they go to or even stop getting extensions forever whatever the case is so just be mindful not to take things too personal because most of the time it's, it's not you it's just the season of their life and i always try to remember that there are plenty of clients to go around <laughs> like i hate when people say like the market is oversaturated when it comes to lash extensions it's really not there are so many people that get lash extensions and there is more than enough clients for everybody to eat so don't go in feeling like your next door neighbor is better than you and who has more clients than you or is going to sue your clients or whatever the case is. As many people come or as many people go is as many people that come through your door. So that it's a revolving door. Um, you're always going to you're always gonna be okay. And I, always, I keep that in mind a lot. I, I will be okay. My business will be okay as long as I put the effort in and the love and the passion that I have for what I do. My business will always be okay. The last tip, and I wouldn't say the most important, but something that people don't realize, tips shouldn't be expected. <laughs> Put your prices as, as much as you want for that service, regardless of tip. Some people tip really big, some people don't tip at all. Some people will give you $2 and be like, hey honey, I left a little something for you. Like, you need a little $2. But people tip what they can if they want, and if they don't, they don't. Your prices are your prices. You don't have to tip anybody. Tips are really an American thing. <laughs> there are a lot of countries that don't actually tip and don't need tips. I'm not sure where tipping comes from, but if I do a little research, I guess I could find out. But tips are great when they come, but don't expect them and don't feel any kind of way towards your clients if they don't tip. It is what it is. They're paying for your service and they're paying full price for your service. So a tip is just a little extra if you know, they want to, but they definitely do not have to. I see I see all the time in like these esthetician groups or whatever, people talking gaga about their clients or whatever for not tipping. Like, oh, I did all this work on her, $350 worth of services and she didn't tip me. You literally just got $350. Like, are you really upset that you didn't get a $30 tip or a $20 tip or whatever? This client handed you over what could have took her hours to make. We have to stop being greedy in this industry. Really, really need to stop being greedy. And if you're worried about tips, raise your prices. <laughs> it's really that simple. This also ties into charging what you're worth from the beginning. I know as beginners, um, we have a hard time wanting to charge a lot because our work is kind of crappy to say the least. But charging what you're worth from the beginning makes it a little easier not to have to raise your prices later once you build a, a solid clientele. So you don't have to tell them later like hey my prices are raising ten dollars in january sorry to break it to you but uh do you still want to stay like you don't have to have those awkward conversations of course as you get better your prices should be raised but i see people raising their prices every couple of months and i'm like my dog like i'm not gonna keep coming to you if you keep raising your prices 
when your full set was fifty dollars and now it's one hundred and fifty dollars, like you're tripping. But if you charge what you want to charge from the beginning, you won't have many issues with that. And I think I said number seven was last, but I'm gonna do a bonus number eight. <laughs> have a freaking cancellation policy because Lord Jesus, the amount of same day cancellations and can drive you crazy, can drive you literally crazy. I think last week I had five or six cancellations last minute. Without a cancellation policy, I would literally be making no money. Right now, I use Square. I require them to put a card on file. If they don't cancel within 24 hours, I do charge the card 50% of the service. So sometimes services are $150. Like, I'm sorry, I'm, I have to charge you half of it. You're taking up my time that I could have had for somebody else, which is extremely unfair to me having to sit in an empty office with no stream of income. I don't work, I don't get paid. So I feel like a lot of clients don't understand that when they're not in my chair, I am not getting any money. So I implemented the 50% off. I am a little wuss about it because I do be feeling bad for some people if it's like COVID or I don't know, a funeral or whatever the case is. I do feel bad for people and I do waive it on more occasions than I should. But please have a cancellation policy. Learn from me. Do it from the beginning. You could either do a cancellation policy or a deposit kind of thing. Either way, get your money for your time, regardless if people show up. So that's my TED Talk for today. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It has been fun talking to you guys again. I really, really miss this. Um, I hope to see you guys soon. And if you have any questions, of course, my comments are always open. I read every single last one of the comments so please let me know i love you all and i'll see you guys later bye